What's up guys, welcome to another awesome Master Series color grading. We are on episode number 3. And before we start, I want to say a special thank you to Pascal Payant for providing me this awesome footage from the movie On the Horizon. Make sure guys to check it out, the movie is really really good. And today we're going to be working with this awesome shot of Red Dragon. I believe it's been shot in 6K. So we have, you know, the couple speeding through the desert on the bike. This is actually looks pretty epic. <clears throat> and we're going to be working today in the Aces color space. We're not going to be using any LUTs. We're going to be completely from scratch in this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. Here's our footage over here. And in order to convert it to the Aces color space, I'm going to do Master Project Settings, DaVinci Aces. Okay, now if you're just gonna click save like that, it's kind of gonna look like crap. So make sure to do another step, very important. Go to the color management and make sure to put ACES input transform, and you have to select the camera that you're using, which in our case, Red Dragon Red Lock Film. There we go. And our output gonna be Rec 709. Okay. Now, another interesting thing, actually, I'm going to mention it in a little bit. Remind me, guys, okay? So, here we have it. This is our pretty much raw footage. It looks pretty ridiculous at the moment because ACES, whenever default color temperatures you have, the moment you transform it to ACES, it kind of amplifies it slightly. So, what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to do a proper color balance in our first node. Actually, I'm going to keep the first note for noise reduction, okay? And let's perform that task right now. I'm going to zoom in and we can see that there's a little bit of noise, but technically the footage is actually very, very clean. So just to work down the line with a cleaner footage, I'm going to do very basic noise reduction, 2. And we're going to remove color from chroma noise, 10. Okay, so let's check it out. Before and after. Huge difference. So that is great. Now, the second note, I'm going to call this color temperature, okay? So this is going to be our color temperature note. And when you're working in DaVinci Resolve, there's a couple ways to change the temperature. One way is with a new built-in temperature little wheel over here, which is actually makes amazing huge difference if you're working in DSLR shots because before dialing color temperature was a little bit tricky and a little bit more complicated without that but when you work with the raw footage I really recommend dialing all your temperature in the camera raw so let's do that and let's see what's gonna happen and by the way whenever you dial things in the raw panel this node is not being affected actually not a single node is being affected because you're working in the raw. Anyways, let's start increasing this thing until we're gonna be satisfied what we see. All right, so that looks pretty solid. Actually, it looks very, very good. I mean, obviously, it's a huge difference comparing to. So we're at the five thousand right now. Look at the look at the three thousand. Night and day, pretty much. So let's do five thousand again. And one of the things that I think we can still finesse this a little bit more and I'm gonna do it in the color bars and here's the thing that I'm gonna show you a lot of people have been asking me what is the Luma mix is and what is it for well uh, let's see let me try to give you a good example okay so let's take a look at offset bars over here if I move offset we can actually see actually let's do it better on gamma if I move gamma, we can see that everything else is sort of moving around with it, okay? We can see how the rest of the uh, red and green moving along. But if we're going to set up to Luma 0, we're pretty much only working now in one channel. They're still moving a little bit, but not as much. So basically, that's what it's for. Let's see. Yeah, definitely they make a big difference. Now, if you don't want to change in every node Luma Mix to zero, this is what you can do. You can go to the color and 
you can put the check mark to luminance mixer default to zero. And the moment you're gonna do that, every node gonna have Luma mix equals zero. Depends on your workflow, depends how you like working. That's what it is. Anyways, so let's do a little bit more financing right now. And I'm gonna try to bring a little bit more down. I wanna bring blue a little bit more down and also a little mid-tone of the blue. All right, so let's check it out before and after before and after okay so now i'm satisfied i really like our default colors i think like this looks way better than before a slightly a little bit warmer again depends on your personal taste depends what director wants for example let's find a sweet spot we can just do half and we're pretty much in the middle from before and after all right so let me create a new node and before we're going to do any adjustments in this, which I'm going to call Exposure, I want to add a really cool plugin by Time and Pixels. It's called False Colors. And I really like using this False Color plugin because it visually shows you the exposure. So we can right away zoom in and we can see that her skin right over here is clipping a little bit, which is not good. We want to make sure that she's not that clipped. Even though it's a bright day, we should still pay attention to where the exposure is. So visually, it's really, really big help. Um, you can basically see the same thing over here, but if you're new or if you want for your convenience, having this plugin really makes a big difference and makes the process a little bit faster. So make sure to check it out from the time and pixels. And the coolest thing about this plugin, it's absolutely free. And I think the, the premium version costs only $5. So really there is no excuse not to use it it's really really helpful all right so let's adjust a little bit of exposure so what i'm going to do i'm going to start bringing it down slightly more okay i really like how it looks now let's check out the snow before and after before and after so we definitely start getting more into that film look so very nice i'm going to do another note right now and in this node, I'm going to change the color of the sky very, very little bit. Okay, so let's go hue versus hue over here. Okay, and let me select with the picker the color. And by the way, if you're going to push right click on your mouse and you're going to do show picker RGB value, you can actually see if you're a Photoshop person, you can see the RGB value. Okay, very helpful. So let's pick a point and let's see okay perfect so let's finesse this a little bit let's make more smoother rollout and by default we're pretty much here and i want to do a little bit more towards the teal i think like that looks more interesting okay actually a little bit probably a little bit even less okay so let's check it out before and after even though it's a very little difference it actually makes pretty huge dramatic change all right, so that looks great. What next? So let me call this one sky. Okay, next, let's play it back and see what we've done. So let me do full screen. So this was before, obviously converted to Rec. 709, and this is after. So very nice, I really like the skin colors. I really like how everything looks at the moment. Very nice, very cinematic. But I want to do a little bit extra steps. So what can we do? Well, I like personally very old school films. And old school films have a little bit warm highlights in particular. So that's what I want to do. I want to create this one. I'm going to call this one highlights. Okay. And right over here, I'm going to go, <clears throat> I'm going to click on costume. And I'm going to select blue channel. And I'm just slightly going to pull down on that blue. Basically adding more warmth into the whole shot. And look how simple adjustment made a, such a big difference. So now our shot looks much, much warmer than before. I really like that. Now, let me play more with the contrast. So I'm going to create this thing and I'm going to call this 
master, master C, master contrast, and let me gain everything back together. And let's see what I can do with the contrast. So let me have a point here, point over here, and let's do point over here. And let's see if I can play around and sort of only affect a little bit of blacks and kind of we can, let's see if I remove this point. By the way, removing the point is a right click of a mouse. And I can actually crush even more blacks like that. But let's keep it some around here. Even though it's a very little difference, trust me, altogether, it makes it more interesting. Okay, so we're pretty much done. That actually looks very, very cool. Let's take a look. All right, very nice. And possibly, because this is a master, I don't wanna do any any more adjustments after that. So let me move all those things around, okay? And I'm gonna do another node over here, and I'm gonna call this one light. And I'm gonna try to do a little bit of relighting and see how it's gonna work and how it's gonna look. Okay, there's nothing is guaranteed. I just wanna do a little bit of experiment. Okay, as we can see that the light is falling behind our characters. So I'm gonna do a very nice feather. Actually, I can even do even softer, just like that. Okay, very good. And I'm gonna go in the qualifier. I'm gonna select only Luma, okay, and let's take a look. Okay, so just like that, like that looks great. Let's do a nice soft selection, and I'm just gonna give it a little, little bit pop, okay? I wanna make sure that her skin is clean, that she's not gonna be clipping or anything funky like that. Let's do a little bit clean white, and let's do a little bit clean black. All right, that looks good. Let's check it out. So before and after, before and after. Look at the difference. Look how much more three dimensional she becomes. Very, very nice. It definitely gives a lot of volume, even to the clouds. So let's check out this whole thing before and after. Very nice, I really love how it looks. And finally, what I personally like doing, so let's do clean up things. Let me combine all this, that way it's not on, on my way. And finally, I just wanna add a little bit of film grain. And I'm gonna use the built-in film grain in DaVinci Resolve, okay? And I'm gonna do, let's see how the 16 millimeter looks. Let's check it out really quick before and after, a little bit difference. I wanna make sure that it's not saturated. Let's see if I can do, let's do this one, 35. Let's remove any saturation. So let's, let's check it out before and after. Perfect, I really like it. And this is our final color grading for the Master Series Episode 3. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Check out my Facebook and Instagram page for different pictures and updates about color grading. And I'll see you soon.